So now we're going to look at combat. Uh, just to note while I'm doing this, I'm actually running this uh, this off two different machines. Uh, one is the machine that's running the DM's view of things. The other is the player view, which is the screen that you're looking at right now. Um, so there's probably going to be a little bit of delay as I move backwards and forwards between the two machines, just so you know what's going on there. So before we get into the combat, um, the thing that I've done, uh, a couple of things I've done since the last video that I, I uh, made, is uh, as far as the monk character here is concerned, it's basically the same as it was, except that I've added uh, an unarmed attack to uh, the monk's abilities. Uh, this is because there's uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that monks do with unarmed, which uh, it felt worth having if I'm going to be showing combat. Hopefully we'll get around to including that in the combat. The other thing that I've done is I've added uh, another one of the trial characters that we've set up, this cleric, uh, mostly because he's got some spells, and I wanted to show how spells work. Uh, potentially he's got a lot more spells than this, uh, but this here is the spell slots he would have available to cast. I've just added a few so you can see how different kinds of spells might work. Uh, but that's the basics. So when it comes to combat, what's going to happen is um, there are, you know, in, in the game there will be maps, there will be areas that you'll be exploring as players. And when it comes to combat, one of the things that you'll we'll need is an actual map that shows relative positions and you know the kind of the whole how all the combat plays out. So for those on those occasions, uh, what's going to happen is that the DM uh, is going to make a map visible to the players, and that map is the one that, uh, for example, right now I've just put up on screen. So this is a map of some docks. Uh, at the moment, there are no particular details on it except for this pin here. Uh, and if you click on that pin, you get a little bit of story. So this is really just the color, the flavor of what's happening. It tells you that. Um, and obviously, in, in regular play, this is the sort of stuff that will just come up in the narrative. But it tells you that you're kind of cautiously descending some stairs towards the lower docks. There are some statues uh, in, that you can see between you and the, the water. And there are some piers. Uh, that are in a bit of a, a bad state of, of disrepair and decay, uh, and that's what you have, uh, what what you're faced with as you're approaching the docks. Now, obviously, you want, we're going to have some combat. So the next thing that's going to happen is that the DM would say, for example, suddenly uh, away in the distance between you and the the water's edge, you see a couple of figures detach themselves from the shadows and move towards you menacingly. And at that point, those characters, those NPCs are going to be made visible to you. And so the first one of those uh, is now visible and the second one of those is now visible and you can see two figures here in the distance. <clears throat> so um, the, these figures uh, are, these tokens represent the NPCs that you'll be fighting. Um, in this instance, I've given them labels so you can see that they are two, two examples of rat folk. Um, uh, in other circumstances, when it's not clear or you don't know what it is you're facing, then those those labels would probably not be displayed. The other thing to note is this green dot here demonstrates that this this particular NPC is healthy. So as combat unfurls, this uh, unfolds. This uh, this color will change. This, this this indicator will change. So you can keep track of which of the the, the various combatants have taken damage. So the other thing that's going to happen at this point is. The, the, the DM is going to open up the combat tracker uh, and put the bad guys into it. So if you if you open the combat tracker now, uh, you'll see nothing in it until the DM makes the two items, in this case, the two bad guys in this case, visible within the combat tracker. Now obviously there are no players in the combat tracker at the moment, and that again is something that the DM will do at this point. So the DM is going to add the cleric and the monk to the combat tracker uh, and at the same time is going to put onto the map the tokens for those two characters. Now the DM has to place them but now that they're in place the owner of that character can take that token and move it around do whatever they like with it so I can move this one to here and I can move this one to here. Obviously at the moment I'm owning two characters but you'll only need to worry about one at a time. <clears throat> so these are uh, the characters. Um, one of them, you'll note, is actually showing up with some wounds. So this is just something that I put on <clears throat> from an earlier uh, dry, dry run. So he's showing up with a, a slightly paler green uh, indicator to show that he's wounded. So these are the characters. Um, and at the moment, I've got initiative in or automatically for the two rat folk. Uh, I can roll that as the DM. They can be rolled. The initiative can be rolled for everybody, for just the NPCs or just the player characters. So at the moment, I've got um, initiatives of eight rolled in for both of the rat folk. Now, for the players to roll initiative, 
they just need to go to their character sheet and I'm going to open both of these obviously as I just said normally you'll only need to worry about having one open per character but this is just so we can keep track of both so to roll initiative it's really simple you just go to the main tab on your uh, character sheet you find the initiative box here uh, which will show whatever bonuses you've got so um, the monk has a plus three bonus because of his dexterity so if you just double click into that space that will roll your initiative 14 plus 3 the bonus there's 17 uh, and then the the cleric likewise will roll 12 and it's just a straight 12 because there's no bonuses so both the the monk and the cleric will go before the rat folk in this combat and that gets the combat set up and started so you can see that there's a first round indicated here in the combat tracker uh, and what happens at this point is the uh, the dm starts the process working for uh, each of the of the rounds of combat so the first thing that's going to happen is the dm is going to uh, move combat on uh, so that the first actor in the combat in this case the uh, the monk <coughs> is now highlighted in, in the combat tracker and is able to work so the the monk is under the control of a player going to be able to do a number of things that you know he can move he can attack uh, he can, you know his, his options are basically what he, what you would expect to be able to do so for the purposes of this exercise what i'm going to do is i'm going to move him from here to a point alongside this rat folk um, and i'm going to attack that rat folk with his quarter staff so Quarterstaff is this weapon here. Um, the first thing that you need to do is target the uh, the object of your attack. In order to do that on a PC, you need to hold down Control and click on the icon of what you're uh, looking at. So here, this is now telling you targets Ratfolk One. So it's really clear. There shouldn't be any hesitation about you having the right thing targeted. It should make it really, really easy for you just to. Um, to select the right things. I'll talk in a second about things like area of, area of effect attacks. So, now that you've got the rat folk, rat folk targeted and you're going to attack with the quarter staff, <clears throat> there's a couple of things you can do. Either you can just double click on this attack or you can drag this, click and drag this attack into the chat window, uh, which is where all the dice rolling happens, or you can click and drag that attack onto the token of the um, that you have targeted. Um, generally speaking, it's entirely up to you which you prefer. I'm just going to do this this way. Roll the dice. Uh, that's a 9 plus 5, which is my attack bonus, which is 14, which is a hit, which means that the next thing I need to do is roll the damage, which is 1d6 plus 2. Again, just drag it into the, con into the uh, chat window. That does... Uh, six plus two damage, which means that the rat folk is di that rat folk is dying. <clears throat> so that's not good news for the rat folk. It's good news for the monk. Um, so that's then the end of the um, that turn for the um, for the monk. So the DM is going to move things on to the next person in the uh, in the combat, and that's the cleric. So at this point, um, there's not a lot that I necessarily need to do in combat terms because I think this is going to be pretty one-sided. But to show you how spells work, um, I'm going to look at the. I'm going to close the monk for a second to get him out of the way. So looking at the cleric's combat uh, abilities, I'm going to look at here and I'm going to see that uh, the monk has the ability to cast uh, a spell on uh, the uh, on himself and his fellow party member which is bless so bless has a number of potential targets <clears throat> and in order to cast it i'm going to again using control click i'm going to target the um the monk and the cleric himself so you can see now targeting two different player characters and he's going to cast bless <clears throat> so bless is a spell that gives uh, a 1d4 additional roll on all attacks and a 1d4 additional roll on all saves for its duration <clears throat> so casting bless what you can now see over here is that there is an effect um, which has been applied to uh, the, the the monk character and to the cleric himself uh, which is to have 1d4 on attacks and saves so that's what the, the cleric is going to do for the purposes of, of this turn. We're not going to do anything else with him right now. You can see that when he did this, when he selected a distant target, it immediately showed you what the distance is between the caster and the target. The same thing would apply with any kind of ranged attack. Uh, so you can, all, you can immediately see if you need to move into to get into range or anything like that. 
Now there are a couple of other things that you can do with this. Uh, one of the things is you can add what what the game what the system calls pointers. So if I do this and choose, if you right click and bring up this menu anywhere on the map, right click anywhere on the map and bring up this this menu and choose pointers. Pointers gives you the option to create cones, circles, and squares, and that's just and arrows uh, on the map. They don't affect anything on the map; they're just indicators. So, if, for example, we knew that this cleric could cast a spell that had an area of effect which was a cone, you can click the starting point for that and then drag it out, and you'll start to see it's ten feet, it's fifteen feet, it's twenty feet, it's twenty-five feet, etc. So you can see whether or not you can fit the targets within an area of effect. At that point, you then still have to select those targets within the area of effect that you wanted to use, what you wanted to target. Uh, this won't do it automatically, because as I said, this is just an indicator. So this won't automatically apply an effect to any targets that sit within the area of effect you've drawn. It's really just an indicator. And to get rid of that, again, you right click on it, select pointers, and then just choose remove pointers, and that's gone. So that's another way of being able to see what it is that you're um, able to do within an individual uh, combat. So then, that being what the cleric did uh, in that combat, uh, again, now the, uh, the the DM will indicate that it's the next character in the combat's turn to act, and that's the first of the rat folk. So the rat folk is going to target uh, the monk, since he's standing right next to him. Uh, and so now the monk is targeted by the... Um, uh, the uh, the ratkin uh, you can rat folk you can see that this plus symbol here shows the benefit of the bless spell so attacks a plus d one d four saves a plus one d four as well um, so this is all uh, going to work and that will that will last for the number of rounds that that's, that spell applies for so actually it's bless it lasts for ten rounds this combat's clearly going to be over well before that's finished but uh, if you ever need to keep track of those things the system does does know round by round by round when uh, effects should drop off so the uh, the rat folk is is ill and dying but is nevertheless for the purposes of this demonstration is going to take uh, a swing at the um, at the monk with his dagger so I'll be rolling that uh, that attack uh, on the DM screen so you'll only see the shape of the dice roll and then it will show you the attack 16 <clears throat> at the monk is a hit so you'll see that in the uh, the combat log here uh, and then it will roll its its damage uh, in similar style so that's going to do uh, three points of damage which is automatically taken off the total um, damage that the uh, the monk can take so that he had he had lost some before he's now taken three more points of damage so that'll be tracked automatically as well <clears throat> so that being what happens there let's just close that out of the way uh, then it's the next rat folks turn so that rat folk is then going to come in um, is going to move here uh, and is also going to attack the monk with his dagger and that uh, is also a hit so again I'm going to roll the damage the damage comes up as four more points of damage and if we look at the monk's hit points there again we're now up to 13 points of damage that have been taken so that is the end of that round so um, we're going to move things on we're now into round two which if i just move this you'll see is now automatically displayed and we're back to the monk so the monk is going to take is once again going to attack the first of the rat folk um, Uh, and is going to attack with his staff. So let's bring up the monk who's attacking with his staff. And that's a hit. So again, we're going to do 1d6 plus 2 bludgeoning. This is clearly going to kill the rat folk. The rat folk's status is now dead. <clears throat> so uh, we have the option of the DM side of things then to, to just to take the uh, the dead rat folk right out of the combat so that it's clear and out of the way uh, which I'm going to do in a moment uh, and then the uh, next attack from the cleric uh, is going to follow up so there are things that the the monk could do as well at this point uh, but I'm just going to move things on so next person in the activity is going to be the cleric so the cleric is going to move here uh, it's going to target this rat folk there uh, 
is going to stop targeting himself and the um, uh, and the monk. Note that you have to unselect things that you had targeted previously. Uh, and what the monk is uh, sorry, what the cleric is going to do uh, is attack with uh, a spell, which is guiding bolt. So let's get that out of the way again. So for spells, he just needs to click on this make his attack which comes with a plus d4 because of the bless spell but misses for the purposes of this this exercise i'm just going to give him a second chance at that and see what happens with that so this time he's going to hit <clears throat> so then you're going to hit this button here which is a little red drop of blood for 4d6 radiant damage and there's a pretty good chance that this is also going to kill the second rat folk and the rat folk is dead so they both now have this grey icon indicated to show that they are in fact dead and that combat is then over and the DM can then uh, either at this point or at the end of the, the session can add, uh, apply uh, XP and uh, sorry, and can give XP to the players and they can then move on to the next uh, next part of the adventure. So that's combat, it's pretty straightforward, hopefully uh, all of that makes sense. Um, there are a few little quirks that as you play you'll start to get your head around. The control click on things to target, remembering to untarget things uh, from one round to the next, things like that. You definitely need to keep an eye on some of the, uh, the the situational conditions that can apply. Certain things like advantage or disadvantage or modifiers to dice. They're things that we'll need to, to work with as we go. Generally speaking, uh, it does look after an awful lot of the the intricacies of combat, pretty much uh, without you needing to think too much about it. Uh, so that is combat.